Esther McKinley. Thank How are you, my dear? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Um, we are obviously May. The weather is okay. Mm. The UK. I don't know about that. <laughs> mm. But it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. We, we, well, we it's, it. it's, it's raining cats and dogs here yeah. now. I, I don't know where the sun has gone today, but I was looking forward to some um, sunshine because the weather's actually been quite good. Yeah. Um, the last couple was, of days. It was beautiful yesterday. Yes. Yeah. And yes. this morning. Mm, oh yes. really? Oh, I, 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 oh, I didn't see. Yeah, I got caught in the rain. I didn't see much this morning, I'm afraid. <laughs> but Patricia, it's lovely to have you here, and and thank you so thank much you. for for taking some time out um, with us this afternoon. Because uh, I know that your sort of your Sunday mornings are quite busy, um, and then you've had to sort of squeeze this in um, uh, before. No doubt you have your evening um, activities. But Patricia. Um, I, I have put a lot of stuff out on our social media about who you are, but I think it's, it's actually worth... <laughs> I know we were, we were working really hard, but um, I think it's actually worth you um, introducing yourself and telling us something about what it is that you do um, so that, you know, our listeners can kind of really get get it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Okay. Thank you for having me, first of all. Um, so, yes, I am... Um, Patricia Foster McKinley. I am primarily a, a writer. I think that's at the core of what I do. I'm mm -hmm. a poet. Um, but I, all the work that I do is kind of, kind of stems from that. So I do coaching. Sometimes I do activities which are based around writing and using that as a form of expression. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think I, I'd like to say that what I do is... is comes from the heart so I'm heart centered so yeah. um I like to work with people who are maybe quite sensitive or who are looking to be empowered and to 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 gain um direction into you know what they want to do so I mm. use coaching for that as well I also do um workshops um facilitate workshops I do training I also um um work in IT outside of my freelance work sure. so I've been, been doing that for goodness gracious um probably about 25 years or so oh wow okay um, oh, wow. yeah in various forms so um but I I um I've worked in um schools universities running um writing based workshops but also personal development workshops mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i love working with young people children and young people young adults and women primarily yeah um so and i utilize technology in that work so i may do um a workshop which is based on writing or there might be an element of maybe doing some um filmmaking or mm -hmm. um photography something like that i just love love utilizing technology um and um i um i like to collaborate with people as well as mm -hmm. an artist mm -hmm. um and i love i put out some videos where i've collaborated with um musicians and other writers um okay. so okay. Yeah. No, so, I mean, you know, in in one of the posts I think I, I, I uploaded, I said that, you know, you were a, a, a poet, an educator, facilitator, whatever, and a lot more. Um, <laughs> and I think that lot more is quite, um, you know, it's quite significant. I mean, in, in a sense, one of the things I think that's always important when when we have our guests is, is for our listeners to get a little sense of, of, of who these people are and... It would be really good if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, how it is you, you came to be a poet, how it is you, because poetry and IT seem to be at quite opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> I mean, that's just an exaggeration, but you know what I mean? So, you know, yes. how, how is it that that has become quite core to what you're doing? Sure. Um, so um, if I go way back to my early days, in um, I grew up in... Lewisham, in South East London, and East oh, wow, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, got a few, I've, got a few, I've got a few who are out there. <laughs> Simon is a South East London man. Oh, nice one. Nice one. <laughs> Nice one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I grew up in, in Broccoli, to be precise. I mm-hmm. um, went to school in Broccoli, uh, sorry, in, in, in Deptford. And um, I really was into drawing and painting. I loved doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved um, sort of entering competitions and things like that. And my parents gave me the, the space and encouragement to do that. They really, really helped me to, you know, really encouraged me with that. But I also love to write write stories. I found that, that I had a really kind of great sort of connection to writing stories. And I I, I think I'm I'm sure my parents won't mind me saying this. So hopefully they're, they're listening and watching. <laughs> um, but my parents are from Jamaica. Any Jamaicans out there? Hello. Yeah, yeah. There's and, a, there's um, a few. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so yeah. I, w- mm. I often, as a child growing up in Lewisham, often heard all these tales about Jamaica, and I was just intrigued. So, but my my parents are the best storytellers, and I I, mm. I think I get that from them. Yeah, and um, well, I had all these characters and folk folklore and all this stuff. You know, you don't know what's real, and what isn't. So I just <laughs> thought, you know what, I'll just leave it. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> one day I'll find out what's the truth and what isn't. Good but, stories, though. Come on. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I sort of grew up hearing this. So I, you know, would lo- you know write my own stories, and I, I used to get a lot of um, praise at, at primary school for doing that. Mm-hmm. And I continued to do that in secondary school, and um, I studied English literature for A level mm-hmm. and learnt more about poets such as um, Louise Bennett the Jamaican poet yep. and it's very interesting because again when my parents were younger they grew up hearing about Louise Bennett and then they told me about her mm-hmm. so by the time I got to secondary school we actually read Louise Bennett poets poetry in school mm-hmm. and this was in the 80s so I was in secondary school in the 80s yeah I'm showing my age and yeah, yes um, yes so was I <laughs> No, it's all good. It's all good. no, tr- trust me, I'd left by then. But anyway, go on, go on, Patricia. <laughs> I ain't that young. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. So, um, mm. yeah, so we learned about poets. Um, I, I, was, I knew Spike Milligan as a comic, um, but he was. We also read his poetry, mm-hmm. so it was it was great. And then, as I was I got further in, in life, I did a um, studied graphic design and illustration so again a storytelling element was in was there Mm -hmm. in my illustrations Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um and then i got to a point where i started you know going to or going to poetry events the spoken word things in the 90s and then the film love jones came out and that i think that did it for me i was just like right i want to do what they're doing in love jones and i don't know if you're familiar with the film love jones but it Centered around a poet and his his, his love life um, with Lorenz Tate. I bet make I bet make a note of that one. Love Jones. I don't yeah, think I've... you have to watch it. It is <laughs> classic. It's a classic. Yes. Lorenz Tate was actually um, giving Neil Long a lifetime award at the at, um, an award ceremony the, the other day, mm-hmm. and they talked about Love Jones, and uh, you know the memories came back. So yeah. that really kind of kickstarted the whole. Thing about doing performance poetry for me mm-hmm. and then I met um, poets um, along the way and they really encouraged me to just take my writing that I'd hidden in a drawer out of a drawer and actually sharing it wow. to, to audiences and going to um, open mic events so I started doing that in the early 2000s so that's when I started performing myself so this year is actually 21 years I've been wow. um, a uh, professional poet which I'm really proud to share um, and yeah so that it's been my poetry journey has just been a love, lovely amazing journey and um, I also became part of a writers um, collective uh, called Malika's Poetry Kitchen mm-hmm. and that was set up by the amazing Malika Booker who the um, collective is named after and Roger Robinson both of them now Award, multi award winning okay. poets in their, their own right. And um, they had already had 
a high level of success um, by the early 2000s. So they wanted to give back to the community and the writing community and that writers who are marginalised but often, you know, um, don't get the exposure and the, the, the encouragement that they, they deserve. So they created this space for us. So it's um, black and brown um, and white writers mm -hmm. um, and um, many from South London again <laughs> and nice. um so yeah it's and now Malika's Poetry Commission um is um you know highly established we we just recently was it last year released um our 21 20 year anniversary anthology um and um it's yeah it's been a great journey so I've had the honor and pleasure of you know um sharing my poetry in schools and I've also been invited to um, perform and, um, and read poetry in Amsterdam, um, in the United States, um, in, the, um, in Belgium, um, Rotterdam, and Gambia as well. So. Okay, okay. Well, let's take a pause there, um, Patricia, because I think, um, you know, it's interesting to hear about international work. Um, we're, we're going to play a little track, um, a, a bit of an Afrobeats one, but when we come back, perhaps we can hear a bit more about your international work and also, because I know you also did some stuff in Jamaica as well. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting to hear a bit about that and, and possibly um, something of, of how it is, how, how you actually help people, um, you know, in terms of their sort of mental um, well-being and so on. Um, if you can give a few examples of that as well. Um, before I go to the next track, I just want to give a big shout out to uh, my mate Chantel, who says that she's from the South also. She grew up in Brixton. So, oh, yeah, so, um, yeah, um, Patricia's giving some uh, ear thumps there for the South <laughs> London people. But listen, this is a West London thing, you know, so don't bother with it. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so, so, Chantel, big up to you. Uh, and big up to Patricia and Simon, the South Londoners. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm surrounded <laughs> by not. them. Let's, <laughs> let's play some music. <laughs>
Yes, Yemi Ada Alade with a track called Wiggle. Hope you enjoyed that one. You're listening to your local radio station. This is uh, Black Connections. We're here each and every Sunday between 4 and 6. Keeping you company. Hope you're having a wonderful day despite the weather. Not great. Um, We've been chatting with Patricia, Patricia Foster McKinley, and uh, she's been sharing with us something of, well, a little something of her many talents and... um, so that's been really good. I think what we will do, Patricia, is perhaps towards the end of our interview, share with the listeners where they can actually follow your work because you do have a YouTube channel, you do have um, presence on Instagram and um, Facebook and so on. So people can actually watch you in action, um, so to speak. Um, before we go on to talking about sort of some of your other work in terms of um, self-care, therapeutic work and so on, uh, just tell us a little bit about your your sort of international work. Um, you, you mentioned Europe. Um, I know that you've also done some work in in Jamaica. Just give us a few lines lines about that. We won't be able to do it exhaustively, but sure. absolutely, we can hear something of, of of what you've been up to. Sure. Um, so I um, taken part in the Mboka Festival. That's spelled M B O K A Festival in Gambia. Okay. So I took part in uh, in 2017 and 2019. So um, Mboka Festival is a literature and cultural festival inviting um, writers, um, artists to to um, deliver workshops, um, uh, literature events, write, uh, reading um, their work, their poems, etc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I. I was at the time when when I first went in 2007, I was just coming to the end of my role as the um, poet in residence for um, Sable Lit Mag, which was um, edited by the wonderful uh, Khadija Sese, also known as Khadija George. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was there in the guise as the poet in residence um, for Sable and Mboka Festival. Um, So I did some... um, uh, yeah, read. I uh, facilitated workshops at some schools and did a lecture, and then um, I did that uh, two years later. And I also took part in the Every Woman Inspired um, event, Women's Conference in Jamaica. Okay. And I did that for three years in a row. So it was 2013, 2014, 2015. Um, so it was. It was when I first got involved. It was very new. It was a, a, the first time we were doing um, doing this event, and um, and I, you know, became good friends with the organisers as well. Um, and that in, again involved um, running the seminars, um, invite, getting organising invited speakers, and I delivered um, some personal development workshops. Mm-hmm and um, writing-based personal development workshops as well. Just, again, um, focus on women and looking at how we can um, be empowered and using writing to to do that as well. I also run and, well, I set up um, the services called URU.co. So that's um, Y-O-U-M-A-R-E-Y-O-U.co. And I'm developing that as we speak into a hub for um, like a hub for healing, doing therapeutic work, um, training and um, coaching. Okay, let me just also let our listeners know that they're actually the link for the the hub is in in all the the stuff we've been putting out about Patricia and being a guest on the show. So it's very easy to find uh, more links for some of her work and what she's actually um, sharing with us today. Um, a big shout out to um, Mervyn 
uh, Caesar John, who's saying that she, it's great to hear Miss Foster's Miss Foster McKinley's poetry story. Um, so you know, again, big shout um, to Mervyn, and and again, um, thank you, Mervyn. More affirmation <laughs> for you, Patricia. Well <laughs> done. I mean, good, good. So, so, so mm. let, let's segue then on to because uh, you know we're scraping the surface to be honest, but you know, mm. you know, you know what it's like. Um, what, what, what? The sort of therapeutic work that you're kind of pursuing and engaging in, and you know, you're doing it through the medium, presumably of, of, of encouraging people to write and so on. Um, what's what's what what's the shape of that? What's that looking like, or what will it look like for for people who may who may be interested in in getting involved? So um, they could be um, as part of a um, coaching session. So I'm a qualified life coach so within the sessions um obviously people will bring up what they want to um discuss and um, be coached on um i often give um little um tasks for people to do um, sure yeah as coaches do <laughs> yes so, you know uh, writing based ones as well so mm -hmm. using um so one thing that i've done before is um writing haikus in a form of affirmations okay. so getting people to write um haiku which is a um three line poet poem very short poem mm -hmm. japanese in, origins in japan um and um five syllables the first line seven syllables second line five syllables in the third line and writing that in a form of i am i am i am so using the terms i am are very empowering mm -hmm. and they're in the present moment and I'm, I'm a Christian as well so I use um, that can be found in many places within the Bible as well mm -hmm. um, so I've I've done I've some sessions um, in my day job um, in a corporate space so getting people oh, okay. to write those um, um, do those exercises and they're finding very empowering so that's one example of how we use writing and also um, writing um, your, if you desire to have certain goals, you may want to write about how you visualize yourself um, um, experiencing those things that you want. Um, so that can be written as a script. Um, I did that myself and it worked. Okay. What, under the guidance of someone or you just took it upon yourself um, to do it personally? It. I did it um, in a workshop I was running. Okay. And actually, one of the workshops was in Jamaica, and then I wrote my own script for what I want, and 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 I saw some things manifest. Mm, nice, yes. nice. Okay, um, so si, I don't know if you have any um, yes, questions I, I, for, I, for uh, Patricia. Um, I, um, I'm, and I've been I've been around. Um, I'm not so much as a poet myself, but I've been around a lot of. Um, a lot of poets and um one of the things that i've always liked is to um especially when you're in um um settings where they you know they they actually recite some of the poetry that mm -hmm. they've written the, perfor um, the performance um poetry the performance, genre. yeah yes, yeah yeah Love yes, that. But, but what but one of the things i've always noticed this is 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 Um, dot com 
and um, you can, the, the link, yes, yeah, so malaikaspoetrykitchen.com, you go to that website, you will um, find information. There is actually a link onto um, where to click to buy the book. So that's one book. Um, um, and there's another anthology, which is called Filigree, Filigree which is um, published by um, People Tree and Inscribe. Um, and I have work in there as well. And that's um, work by um, Black and Asian writers in, in the UK. Um, there's also an anthology which is called Red, and again um, published by People Tree, um, an amazing um, um, publishing um, house which publishes work by Caribbean and African writers. And um, again, that I have three pieces of work in there. Um, I also am in the process of getting my own collection of poetry. Um, right. published and I've been saying this for a little while but it should be <laughs> hopefully towards the end of the year maybe next year well, but, um, better late than never you may need you may need some coaching um, Patricia <laughs> 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 I'll set you three yeah. tasks and that might be oh, one of them <laughs> all right thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah 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 and, you, you, um, I, I know what it's like <laughs> i know what it's like <laughs> yeah. so yeah, yeah so that's best intentions also, and all that mm, mm. absolutely so that's um a few um it's work that i have out but yes as i mentioned the malika's coach mm. poetry kitchen anthology is available to purchase um um as well as filigree red as well and i also have work in um the loose whip or not loose whip <laughs> um loose news <laughs> loose, no. loose okay. news um mm. anthology so loose news is um it's a writing event um set up by the wonderful agnes meadows and um she published um i think a minimum of three anthologies or um of um, poetry work and it's it's focused mainly on um, women poets so I have work in two of those as well. Well thank you so much um, Patricia for sharing all that you've shared with us. I think what happened certainly on my end I had a bit of a glitch where oh. um, I lost a bit of sound but I do hope that um, people who were listening was a, were able to kind of um, to, yeah. get all of that and if not I'm going to actually retrieve the full interview from our, our centre, so we can um, okay. we can share that. Post with... it on our socials. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, what what I'd also like to ask um, Patricia is if you some of these the references that you're mentioning, um, if you could just send those across to us, so we can we can um, publicise those on our on our social media. Um, okay. As as we sort of aim to wrap up, are there any sort of uh, final words or? or, or events or activities that you want us to know about um as as we move forward what's coming up well, well you've got to finish uh, off that book of poetry that's one thing i don't want to pressure you but you know no pressure actually wipes the brow yeah go on. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah so i'm actually um taking part in a really amazing um, virtual festival, which is called um, Everyone Plus Everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's written, every, I'll, I'll write it in down for you, but it's written every one and then the plus sign everything. Okay. Um, um, it's um, curated and produced by a good friend of mine, um, Matt Strong. And okay. um, the festival is to support the work um, basically promote the awareness of mental health. So obviously we've been, we've come to the end of uh, Mental Health Awareness Week. Yes. And it's a very important time, especially as we've come to the end. Of, well, we're still <laughs> technically in a pandemic. That's right. That's right. But I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 And yeah. people are still, I mean, I, I hold my hand up. I've had my fair share of challenges myself. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but, it's important that people know that there is support out there. Yes. There's, there's support that people can get 
to help them. So Matt has is been very um, open about his own mental health journey, and this is why one of the reasons why he created this event. Okay. So um, as it's a virtual uh, festival, there are over fifty artists, performers, myself included, um, and um, you um, you go on to the every one plus everything dot com website address and you can then um request to to um donate to the festival so you donate 15 pounds and then you can gain access to the festival you'll even get an um a, a festival wristband okay sent to you okay. and then you can access all the material etc so that's i have um sort of involved in that well, so do, um, do do send us the link so we can share that as well absolutely. because that that's uh, what's great about some of these virtual events is the reach is so it's so wide you it's you can go yes. international so I love that anyway, yeah so sorry carry on I interrupted you no worries at all um and um yeah just really going forward with the work that I do um um I as well as coaching I do um Reiki um a Reiki practitioner so. Um, I've helped people, um, you know, during the pandemic to be calm, to, mm -hmm. um, to, to heal them, mm -hmm. etc. Um, so that's something that's quite useful. Um, and um, and just sort of, yeah, working with people, mainly sort of artists, um, the, um, create, helping them to create work-life balance. Because as an artist myself, I know it's a challenge to... Have, you know you've got your day-to-day -day things that you need to do but as an artist you need to express yourself you need to create you need to write mm -hmm. um and um i know you had um cabby charles on a few weeks ago amazing yeah, yeah. writer and author so i know what her practice is like and i've, I've admired what she, how she works and been very, very inspired by her and um but it's important to have some self-care and just to look and you know look after yourself mm -hmm. it's important to find your support network um to 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 just have the people around you who have your back um and if you are a creative person it's essential that you create that you write you need you have that outlet because um when you're not creating as a creative person the part of you is um stagnant sure. you, you, you feel cut off so I have to make sure that I make the time to um, create. And that's why I you know, do lots of YouTube videos. Um, I've just also, um, myself, I'm going to create um, one of my poems I'm going to make into a video. So I was doing some filming the other day, just mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to, um, it's, a, it, it's actually part of my 21 years as a writer, performer. And I'm going to add that. Put yeah, to commemorate it. Wonderful. Well, listen, um, Patricia, as usual, time has, has run away from us, but thank you so much for spending some time with us. Do do send us links and um, uh, let us know when you're when you're doing stuff so we can we can share and we can participate and support. Um, I, I do have some of your information, so I'll post that. We've got your socials, so we'll post that, too. But thank you so much for spending time with us today and um, sharing wise words and giving those of us who may be creative um, a potential opportunity and and avenue to to kind of share that um, and express ourselves. So thank you so much. Invaluable. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed yeah, this. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. It's been great. All right, we're heading up to the national news headlines now, so I'm going to play us out with a track. And uh, again, thank you so much, Patricia, for sharing um, all that you've shared with us. As I say, we've only scratched the surface, but um, at least we've made contact, and no doubt we'll we'll, we'll do more stuff in the future. So uh, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>